it's easy to stay in our comfort zone, that place where we can avoid failure and the harsh judgment of others. President Theodore Roosevelt referred to this comfort zone as the gray twilight. And in a moment, I'd like to tell you about a client of mine that escaped this gray twilight by dropping out of medical school to pursue his invention. But first, allow me to take you back in time to when I was 12 years old. It may not be evident now that I'm an adjunct professor and a patent attorney, but at 12, I was incredibly cool and stylish. And here's proof. And I, was, I had a mission. I took apart a Rubik's Cube with a screwdriver, and I destroyed it. My dream and sole ambition in life was to create a round Rubik's Cube. You can tell the nerds early. And one day, my mom took me to the mall. And I went, we went to KB Toys. And I went where I always went, the aisle that had the puzzles and games. You know the one. And what I saw there on the shelf crushed me. Somebody had already made a round Rubik's Cube. And they came up with a better name than round Rubik's Cube. They called it the Impossible Ball. The Impossible Ball. And in my 12-year-old mind, they had stolen my idea. And I fought hard not to cry in front of my mother. And I succeeded. Except, does anybody know you like your mom? My mother had seen me fighting back tears. And she had seen the uh, sketchbook underneath my bed with page after page of drawings, of model designs of round Rubik cubes. And as I looked up at her, she saw me fighting back tears, but I didn't cry. My mom started crying. And, and my mom is not one of these soft, gentle criers. She cries loud, and she's embarrassing me. I have friends at the mall, and I had to get her out of this store quick. So I grabbed her by the hand, and I dragged her out of the store. Now, the store clerk had seen plenty of mothers dragging out crying kids. This is the first time, I bet, that he saw a kid dragging his crying mother out of the store. Children cry when they don't achieve their dreams. And do you know why? Because they actually believe that achieving their dreams is possible. But something happens to us as we grow up and become adults. We let people convince us that our big, bold, beautiful dreams are just fantasies. And so we start dreaming small and dreaming safe. We stay confined within this comfort zone, if you remember that President Roosevelt referred to as the gray twilight. People will keep you in this gray twilight if you let them. Oprah Winfrey was told that she's too ugly to be on television. Walt Disney was fired by a newspaper editor who said he didn't have enough imagination. Can you imagine that? Walt Disney. How many of your dreams have you not pursued because somebody convinced you that you don't fit the perfect mold? You don't look the right way. Or you don't, haven't gone to the right schools or have the right uh, uh, connections, money, or social background. What if you would ignore all of this and just push ahead with your dream anyway? What would happen? Allow me to share a quote from Mahatma Gandhi because this would happen. First, they'd ignore you. Then they laugh at you. And then they fight you. Pretty depressing, isn't it? The good news is, this is not the full quote. I'll come back to that. I promise. I first want to tell you about my dream. When I was in law school, I wanted to be a patent attorney. And I was naive enough to dream big and bold I wanted to work at the law firm of Fish and Neve. And if you don't know Fish and Neve, they're the patent lawyers that represented Thomas Edison with his inventions. 
Henry Ford, Alexander Graham Bell, and the Wright brothers with patents on the airplane. Fish and need is to patents and inventions. What Muhammad Ali is to boxing, the greatest of all time. But unlike Muhammad Ali, I wasn't prepared for a world that hit hard, like a punch to the vulnerable part of your throat that leaves you gasping for air. A world that's constantly telling you that you're not enough and that the dreams you have are just fantasies. Like the director at the University of Miami, a law school placement director, who told me that I had no chance at getting into Fish and Need. They only hire from Harvard and Yale, and they only hire students that had done summer internships. Summer internship? Are you kidding? I put myself through law school at night by supporting myself full-time during the day as an engineer, although I didn't have the luxury of quitting to do a summer internship. I finished at the top of my class, I aced the patent bar exam, and I ignored that placement director and excitedly sent in my application anyway. Since I'm telling you this, you probably think things ended up well. You would be wrong. I got this rejection letter, and it stung hard. I couldn't sleep that night, and I tossed and turned. And the next day, at the construction site where I was working, I left during my lunch break. I took the letter, and I drove to find a phone, a pay phone, if, if anybody even knows what that is. And I, I called Ms. Rogan, the person that wrote this letter, and I reminded her that her law firm's claim to fame is the, is the Wright brothers, the invention of the, the airplane. Two bicycle mechanics that invented the airplane. They didn't fit this perfect mold, I told her. They were from Dayton, Ohio, neither one of whom had gone to college, only one of which had even gone to high school, finished high school. The world misjudged them and told them that their dream of human flight was nothing but a fantasy. Mr. Risby, Ms. Rogan interrupted, hiring committee decisions are final, and I don't understand what your point is. My point, and the hair stood up on the back of my neck, is that your hiring committee has made a mistake. They need to look at my application again because they have misjudged me. Click. You probably think things didn't end up well. Well, five days later, I got a letter in the mail from Fish and Eve. I thought I was being sued. I'm, I'm a lawyer, after all. Instead, I found my dream law firm was asking me to come on board and join them as a patent attorney. <laughs> Thank you. Remember that partial quote from Mahatma Gandhi? First they ignore you. Then they laugh at you, and then they fight you. Well, when they fight you, I want you to fight back. We get one go at this, one chance at life. And if somebody tells you that your dream is silly, stupid, or unrealistic, you tell them where to go. And fight for your dream or it will die. Nobody else is going to fight for your dream. That's what was given to you. And what if your dreams are not being kicked? And no one is telling you these things. Take that as a sign to dream even bigger. Now, I settled in well at Fish and Eve. I was uh, learning from the best patent attorneys in the world, making more money than I had ever seen. Now, money will fill the hunger in your stomach. It won't fill the hunger in your soul. Something was missing. And it was five years before I fully understood what that was. I became a patent attorney to help inventors protect their ideas. Instead, I found myself with MBAs and corporate lawyers, and meeting after meeting, day after day, at institutions and multinational corporations, basically moving paper around, far removed from the creative spark of ingenuity 
of the inventor. My whole reason for being a patent attorney in the first place. You see, somewhere deep inside me was still that 12-year-old boy who related to inventors and at one time thought he was one. Now, I wanted to quit. I wanted to start my own law firm and represent inventors. But when I told this, my dream to others, you're nuts. You're crazy. John, this is career suicide. And the harshest thing of all, we'll hold on to your resume for when you come crawling back. Well, I never did go back. And when I resigned, they told me at Fish and Eve, there's no stability in having my own law firm. And it was a risky proposition. The irony is that today, Fish and Eve no longer exists. And my law firm, 16 years later, is still going strong and has grown beyond my wildest expectations. I believe my reason for being born in this world is to help rid inventors of this feeling that they can't pursue their dreams because they don't fit the perfect mold and are outsiders. Outsiders, like that client I told you about, Alex Gomez. Now, Alex recognized that surgical camera lenses became fogged in the operating room. The existing solution? Doctors would dip the lens in a warm bucket of water and put the surgical instrument back inside the patient. Alex thought this was primitive, and it led to infections. He had a better idea. And he designed a surgical camera lens defogging unit. And he put together this, this prototype, this working model, and he told others about it. You're nuts. You're crazy. Alex had dropped out of medical school to pursue this invention and taken a chance on his idea. So they labeled him a dropout. They ridiculed him for having never done a residency. So he brought this working model to my office. He puts the contraption right on the corner of my desk. John, he says, I don't care what people say. My device works. It is going to change the way surgical camera lenses are cleaned in the operating room. You have to fight and win this patent for me. You have to win. Two years after I filed his patent, Alex sold his company for a hundred million dollars. And his device has been used in over a million surgeries. And his prediction that it will change the way surgical camera lenses are cleaned has come true. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, and then they fight you. I promised you the full quote. Well, here it is. Then you win. Then you win. We give our fear fancy names. We let people convince us that giving up on our dream is being realistic, and that dreaming small and dreaming safe is being practical. We hide behind terms like cost-benefit analysis, convincing ourselves that the cost of pursuing our dreams is too high. The greatest cost, they say, is debt. They are wrong. The greatest cost is dying, with your unfulfilled dream still suffocating inside you. Have the courage, like Alex did, to pursue your dream, and then fight like hell for that dream. Escape the gray twilight and win. Thank you.